The following is paid programming. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803 0930. Toll free at 1 800 616 9236. And cell calls are free at Star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullius. Hey, everybody, this is the tax lady. And I might add the pooped tax lady, but uh, we got like nine days left. And, you know, so now in the past couple years, they've extended during COVID. They extended it for like two months. Then last year for a month, there is no extension this year. Ex- well, actually, there is. It's G- it's April the 18th this year. So you got nine days to get your poop together because you got to get those taxes in or an extension filed. And when you file your extension, you got to pay your taxes or else the extension is not worthwhile. So anyway, I'm joined in studio with my buddy, Chris Fabian. Hey, Christopher. Hello, Esther. Hello, Christopher. So are you pooped? Yeah, we were just talking about padding our office. I said, are we going to do it in white all around the room and we could use it for a dual purpose? <laughs> the padded room, yeah. Uh, but it's it's such a blessing to see all of our clients and to serve them. I mean, it, it feels painful in one way and unpainful in another, right? Yeah, yeah people go... You, Seven you, in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. That's a long day. Yeah, you must love what you do. I said, I love my people. That's true. You know, well, you, got, it, you love what you do. I do. So. But I mean, it's different if we were just in an office where our desk was full of papers and you didn't see You're anybody. Right. You're right. It, it would is, be totally it is different. The people that makes it wonderful. Like yep. I just met a lady from Lewiston a little minute, a little while ago. And it was it's wonderful. Anyway, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. Look at we got all those offices open and ready to help you. If you're sitting home to this weekend on Palm Sunday after church and you're getting your stuff together, you can count on EG Tax. We we will get her done um, for you. And I will. And for many people, they think, well, I'm just going to ignore it. So kind of, I got a list of things today. Do this, not that. And if you find out you did that rather than this, you might want to amend your return if you've already done it. And if you haven't, if you haven't done it, um, that's good because I think we have some really good suggestions. So uh, one of the first things is file your your tax return even if you owe money. Why is that, Chris? Oh, I'm reading your list. It says don't owe money. Um, but you want to get your return in because the penalty for not filing is 25% of your balance due. Right. 5% a month till it gets to 25%. That's the big penalty. So they're basically saying, okay, you owe us money. Then we're only, we're only going to charge you a half a percent for that. But if you don't file your return, we charge you 5% per month till it gets to 25%. On top of that, we're charging the half a 1% for you, failure to pay, and then interest on the whole thing. So you want to get your return in uh, and filed electronically. And if you have a liability, we can help you set up a payment program. But the important thing is get that tax return in. So that's what you want to do. You want to do this, not that. Right, right. You definitely want to file. I mean, I, I am always amazed when people come out, oh, I knew I was going to owe so that's why I came in on the 14th. Well, I would rather come in in March 14th so I had time to figure out how I'm going to pay. Right. Well, see, what we do is when we file electronically, we pr- when we prepare your return, we have a, a little form on there that says, when do you want the funds withdrawn? So if you we did your return in January and you'd owed money, we tell the IRS, take the money out April the 18th when it's due. We don't make you pay it early you just you just get to get it done early right right yep okay i'm esther Lewis, the tax lady from eg tax you can go to our website at egtax.com you can see a list of all of our offices our staff is ready to help you if you need tax questions answered you can call our switchboard here at corporate headquarters 632-7886 but our phone number here in studios 8030930 8030930 star 930 on a cell phone uh, you can text us at 716-8030930 and we have Mike in Tonawanda. Hey Mike, how can we help you, sir? Hi Esther. 
I know the the 2021 uh, taxes are due the 18th, but um, uh, I'm, I'm getting some money back for 2018. So uh, the limit on that, is that also the 18th for state and federal, or is that the 15th? That has to be received by the 18th. Okay. And boy, I'm going to tell you with the mail. Not, not postmarked. You know, it has yeah, to be, be received. received by them. So electronics is, is the most important. No, you can't you electronically, can't electronically file 18. True. So you'd have if, to send it to Overnight Express. Yep. How much money you got coming, Mike? Uh, a couple thousand. Yeah, yeah. well, you don't want to miss that. You better get her in. I would do it some type of registered mail so you're sure that they have it uh, before the 18th. Is, is the Buffalo IRS office open where you could drop it off like you nope. do or not? They don't do that. They only are open by appointments only. you got to mail it. Um, I th- it's a not even Andover. I think it's in Cincinnati. No, Cincinnati There's different addresses at, for different things. So um, if you want to call our office at 632-7886, um, somebody here can give you the address for the paper return. But make sure you send it overnight with the return receipt requested so you have proof so if in case they say no you didn't get it in time you have proof that you sent it in okay thank you all right thanks mike i'm master Gullius, the tax lady 8030930 oh star nine three in a cell phone and just in case what mike is so concerned about is losing that refund you, people that say well i don't have to worry i'm getting a refund yeah but after three years from the due date of the return, you lose that refund. So remember the lady that came in with all those earned income credits and she yep. had was late and she lost tens of thousands of dollars. You certainly don't want to lose that. And before the before the deadline on the 18th of April, if you have had kids that have had W-2s and you haven't filed for them because you thought, ah, they, they don't have to file, and they got money coming back, do their return because get their money back before it's before they lose it right money's money and you know kids always ask hey can i borrow 20 bucks can i borrow ha 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 um can i have 20 bucks and yeah here's your own money back you know Mm -hmm. that's you know absolutely so okay so i'm going on my list 8030930 star 93 in a cell phone uh here's number two File your return, even if you don't have to, if you work, because why? Earned income credit. That's right. They give you money. Do you know, like, I'll give you an example. If you came in and you didn't work and you had four kids under the age of 18, uh, that person who didn't work because they have kids would get $14,400 back. They would get a refund of fourteen thousand four hundred dollars. That's what's in our tax code. And and the other thing, if you're working, is the earned income credit. So if you're working and you're middle to lower income, they're going to give you money even if you don't have to file. Right. Right. Yep. You know, you you got to know the rules. If you don't know the rules, don't do the return. Have somebody. Who well, that and that's for sure. I mean, if you did it electronically by yourself, you don't know if you got the, the right answer. But we're going to talk all about that. We're going to take a short break. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 93 on a cell phone. We'll see you on the other side. Hey, all my family out there, we just want to thank you if you trusted us to help you with your taxes because we, I mean, really, you're the adrenaline that keeps us going. I know myself, I work from 7 in the morning till about 9 o'clock at night every night except for Saturdays. Oh, my gosh, I'm not going to work that late tonight. <sighs> I'm here um, till midnight. And if it weren't for, I mean, the cl- our clients are just like, like, uh, Caffeine. It's just wonderful in a wonderful way, right? Right. All right. I'm right. Esther Gullius, the tax lady. Um, 8030930, 8030930, star 93 on your cell phone. What do we take the tax first, Chris? Sure. It says, Good afternoon. We took out CARES Act qualified IRA and 401k distributions in 2020. We spread the tax payments out over three years. 
where do we account for the next third of the taxes due on the federal and state tax forms for 2021? And that's really important. When you took the money out in, in 2020 out of the IRA or out of your pension plan because of the CARES Act, they said you can have the option to spread it out over three years. Don't forget to include it. And the form that you use... Is an 8615. So form 8615, you put one-third of that distribution because last year you took a third, this year a third, and next year a third. And you got to make sure you did it. And if you think that you're going to get away with something by not putting it on, that's not good because they're going to penalize you and send you a bill. And, and most importantly, you don't get one-third of your withholdings from 2020 that's either. That's right, because you got it up front. Yep, you got it last year. Okay, let's go to Jane. Hey, Jane in Amherst, how can we help you? Hi, um, my son is, he lives at home. He has a job, he does DoorDash for a side thing. Um, he saved all his gas receipts. He would probably use a standard deduction. Can I do those gas expenses or no? Okay, all right, so you're going to use a Schedule C. Okay. And on the Schedule C, that's where you're going to, he's self-employed. How much did he gross, Jane? Um, I want to say 700. I don't really remember. He grossed 700. That's all. Oh, gross. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because I don't have the W two in front of me. Okay. Is that was that his only source of income? Oh no, no. He's got a full time job. Okay. So, all right. So you're going to use the Schedule C and you're going to reduce it by all the expenses that he incurred to make the money. Primarily, it's going to be mileage. So you're going to make sure that he reconstructs all of his miles, and uh, that would be found on page two of the Schedule C, and that reduces his um, his income quite substantially because it's how much per mile, Chris? Fifty six cents for right. 2021. Right. So if he traveled ten thousand miles, it's a fifty six hundred dollar deduction plus plus uh, tolls if he had any. Maybe he had bags that he bought to put groceries in. You know, okay. and um, maybe he uses his cell phone to produce the income. But the thing is, when you're self-employed, you pay two taxes. You pay income tax and you pay FICA, right? Right. And New York State. And oh, three taxes, yeah. <laughs> um, and, but on the federal, you pay two. So it's really incumbent upon him to make sure that he whittles down that self-employment by those expenses that he incurred so he doesn't have to pay a bunch of money. And the, pro and the only tax that isn't covered by something else um, really is FICA. Right. Right. So All the right. education credit doesn't get rid of it. Right. That's true. So yeah. nothing gets rid of it. Uh, nothing gets rid of FICA. Okay. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jane. Thanks for your question. Okay. And we're going to go to, um, let's see, we're going to go to Carol. Hi, Carol. Hello, Carol. Earth to Carol. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. I have a question. I had heard you advertise that there was a, a tax um, proper, a, a tax on property taxes that you get a rebate for besides yes. the SAR. Was it yep. called the New York TT9 or something like that? Or yes, seven? 229. Yes, it's, an N, it's a New York 229. 229. Okay, when I right. went and had my taxes done, he didn't. He said, no, I don't qualify for it. I pay over $10,000, you know, putting the two taxes together in February and you know, October. How well, do okay, you, do so I what's not... your income, though, Carol? How much is your income? Oh, I'm retired. Does it okay. depend on that? About how how much is your income? Oh my God, I have to. I wasn't ready for that. Well, just yeah. I mean ballpark figure. All right. So here's the thing. Um, if your if your property taxes exceed six percent of your adjusted gross income, then you should look at filing the NY two two nine. Okay. Let just repeat that again because I was trying to write it down. Six percent. If you if your income. My if your property taxes exceed 6% of your adjusted gross income, then you should look at doing the form. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you so much. That was a question. You're very welcome, Carol. Other thing, too, is I did sell property last year. Oh, I lost a lot. That's probably what happened. Yeah. I'm sorry? That's probably why uh, your preparer thought you didn't qualify. Did you have a big gain? Well, I don't think so because it was a double. 
and neither yeah, so one you of sold them rental property. When you sell rental property, you have to recapture the depreciation. So when you get into this, Carol, you're going to find out that you probably had a bigger gain than you knew, and that must be why you didn't qualify for the 229. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Esther. Nice you're welcome, dear. Thanks for calling. You're welcome. Yeah, just bye -bye. Yep, yeah. Bye. Yeah. Just so people understand, like say she bought the rental property for $50,000 and she had it for uh, 13 years. On the for tax purposes, her basis is twenty five thousand. So if she sold it for fifty thousand, she still has a twenty five thousand dollar gain. gain. Right. So that could be that's what Esther was saying about right. that. So yeah, and when you sell rental property or anything with depreciation, you have to recapture the depreciation on a form forty seven ninety seven, and um, and and you think to yourself, well, I don't feel like I made a lot of money. No, but you're you're you had a systematic write off of the asset, and now in the year of sale, you're you're got to yep. pay the piper. All right, let's go to Steve. Hey, Steve, how can we help you? Hi, Esther. Uh, yeah, I had my taxes done this past week in your office with Maria. Saw you in your little pink outfit there, but anyway, I'm a. <laughs> neat, uh, oh, I just wanted to comment. The la one of the last callers was speaking about her son working for DoorDash, and I do some uh -huh. DoorDash on the side. And DoorDash sends uh, the um, the employee, not the employee, but the 1099 recipient, an estimated uh, number of miles driven while on the app and while actually delivering. So, you know, she is her, well. Oh, that's a really great uh, thing. Now, I've done a number of DoorDash people, and by the way, DoorDash is a great way to make money. Um, I mean, I think DoorDash people do a lot better than and any Uber of the and Lyft. Uh, yeah Uber and Lyft because Uber and Lyft just kills you with with fees. But I I have never had anybody tell me that that was provided for them. So thank you very much. So mom, if you're listening, tell your kid to look at his 1099. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It'll, you can get the 1099 from them as well. Uh, the only thing that if they, if you start doing multi-apping, which I've done between Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash, is you've really got to keep track of your miles combined. Of your in-between going from one place to another, right? Yeah, because the, the total of all three is going to be way over the real number of miles. Just, just out of curiosity, how much do you think you did in your, in your del food delivery last year? I did 36000 gross, and then after the self-employment tax, it was about thirty-two thousand. But that's great, don't you think? Well, it is. And my my daughter, I mean, me onto. She was doing Instacart, and she grossed thirty-eight thousand. Yep. She netted. I, I think that people have no idea. I mean, because now we, when I do an Uber and Lyft driver, they have this kind of fee and that kind of fee and the other kind of fee. And after you get done with all the fees and the and the mileage. It's it, they're not making any money. The beautiful thing about DoorDash, and I guess it sounds like I'm doing a commercial for them, but I guess I am because it's a great <laughs> way to make it's a great way to make money. You're gonna start seeing Esther out there doing DoorDash. Maybe I will do DoorDash. But anyway, I really appreciate this call. Thank you so much. Sure. See you again. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, I mean, when you think about, I have, I have one. The other nice thing is when you do DoorDash. Um, you can pick and choose. You know, I right. think I'm going to work today. Right? right? It's a really sunny day. You know, and I'm going to the beach today. I just had one of my clients, longtime clients. I know him very well. He just got kicked out of Lyft because they said he used profanity. This guy hasn't swore a day in his life. Wow. And and you can't fight it. They just said you're done. You can't do us anymore. Well. So okay. I you know. All right. So all right. Back to my list. And again, eight zero three zero nine three zero. 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. Uh, you can text us at 716-8030930. Okay, we do have a text. What's our text? Why don't you ever mention about receiving your federal income tax refund in the form of I-bonds, which are paying over 7% right now? Which is true, but they only pay 7% for a very short window of time. And by the way, this morning, I found a bank, um, a Comenity Bank is paying 2% on five-year CDs. Okay. So you can see That's interest rates are going back up. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's really sad when you look at these people's interest over the last three years. Drop, drop, and now they, oh, I didn't get any interest this year. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, that's true. Uh, I-bonds are paying a very high, I think it's six months that they pay the 7%. 
Do you know, Chris? I don't know off the top I of my head. I think it's six months, but it's, it's uh, or our, our texter, if you know, text me and let me know. But it's a short period of time. Um, and, of course, it's tax-free on the state, so um, it's, a, it's a safe investment, I guess, <laughs> as safe as it can be, right? Right, right. Um, and they are paying a large amount of interest rate. And, again, again, Comenity is paying 2% on a five-year CD. And I think you're going to watch them all go back up here. All right, I'm Esther Villius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930 star 93 on a cell phone. You can text us at 8030930. No, at 8030930. 716 right. That's, right. That's what I meant. All right, we're going to take a short break for the news. We'll be back with your calls and your questions and comments on the other side. To us, you are family, and uh, just want to thank all of our family who have have uh, used our service all this uh, tax season. And for all you future family members who are listening, uh, you know we love you. So uh, it, it, the most important thing to us is that you don't overpay your taxes, and that you know that you have a that you have somebody to talk to before you do something that would be not wise. Like I had a client the other day who decided to roll over, who's, he's like 47, decided to roll over like $600,000 from a traditional pension plan into a Roth. Ouch. And so with the penalty and the taxes, he owes like over $300,000. Now, it's so sad because he didn't think that was going to happen, and that's why it's so important to talk to somebody before you do something like that. And you that. can't change it back anymore. And you can't change it back, right? Yep. Anyway. Um, and, yeah, we, and, and we had a texter. Um, we, we did make a mistake. It is Form 8915 for the... For the uh, CARES for Act the CARES rollover, Act. not yeah. an 8615. I apologize. Just a little you tired. You must be tired. Just All a right. little. Um, wanted to say this to doing this, not that. We, we mentioned it at, at before the break. Somebody called about the property tax credit. There is a real property tax credit in the state of New York if you have a house worth less than 85000 That's called an IT214. For, and it's especially helpful if you're a senior. But this credit is for people that have property taxes, regardless what the value of the house is. Um, there is an income level limit at the top. I think it's like 250000 something like that. But you qualify to get any, a refund of anywhere from 250 to 350 on uh, the New York return NY. Two two nine. So if you're somebody that has property taxes um, that exceed six percent of your adjusted gross income, do the form. If you have, if you've already filed, amend the return. Get your money back. Right. 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 Definitely. All and right. And again, eight zero three zero nine three zero eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine thirty on a cell phone. And we're going to go to Tom in Hamburg. Hi, Tom. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yes, I got a question on the FMLA deduction that they charge you, and I know there's a max of approximately $480 a year that you pay into that. I work two okay. jobs, and I'm wondering uh, how I, I'll, I'll go way over that in my two jobs. I know one job will stop at 480 and the other job I won't make probably up to 480 but I'll have a total of probably 600 and something dollars if I let it go. Is there any way to cancel that out on one of the jobs? You're supposed to fill out a form with the second job if it's a part-time job saying you're covered under your primary job. Or if you do go out on it, you could collect on both jobs. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you very much. Very well. Not a problem. All right. So, again, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. Um, do this, not that. If you have college-aged children... That would mean under the age of 24. And uh, they're in school going to a continuing college higher education. And they filed their own return and they claim themselves 
revisit that because you could have thousands of dollars coming back. Right, Chris? Right, right. I mean, the AOTC, the AOTC. Is, is just remarkable credit. I mean, I just had a gentleman, his son claimed himself, and he lost $3,000, so he went from a refund to owing money. He's not too happy with his son right, right now. Right, but he could amend the return. But they could amend the son's return, yes. So what would happen is you'd amend the return, the kid would pay back probably $1,000, and you would get, in most cases, um, $2,500 plus $400 uh, thereabouts for the state of New York. So, so just because your kid claimed themselves doesn't mean you should let it sit with that, with you not getting all your money. Right, right, right. Right, yep. so again, oh. um, let's see, do this with Wait. it. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we've got a text. Okay, yeah. Um, somebody did their daughter's return through H&R Block Online, and there was a problem with the return, and they said, you should do an amended return. Well, they took the original balance due out, and then the balance due got reduced with the amended return, but they took the full amount out again. So it looks like... New York State took way too much money or their software was wrong. So what I would do is, if this is who I think it is, um, go to our Lockport office, see Sue, show her your correspondence from the New York State. It, it just may be a, we have to do a th second amended return to get the money back. Or maybe she owed the 260 and then because of the mistake, she owed another 220. But if you bring everything to Sue in Lockport, right there in the Big Lots Plaza, if this is uh, from Pendleton, you can uh, get that resolved. Do you think that maybe a phone call uh, would be a neater way to do it? You know, the, the thing that scares me about doing all these amended returns is they don't process them. And then you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah, yeah but I mean, since they have the amended return, they've are they made a mistake, and so right. But it could have been a mistake not in her favor, but in New York's favor. Oh, so I she see. owed an additional. So if you get let it have a professional take a take look, a look at, at it, it, yeah, and see, well, nope, you were right. She should have paid that originally, or yeah. nope, they're wrong. Then we got to figure. Then a phone call might be to figure out what to do. Yeah. Sometimes the phone call can be very effective. New York State is pretty good about answering their phone calls too. And, yep. you know, you just get yourself a, a hot toddy and prop yourself up on the pillows because it's going to be a long wait. But talking to a human being can be the best thing you can do, especially those of you that are also waiting for the federal government to process stuff. Um, obviously, in the summertime, we do a lot of that kind of stuff. We don't have time this time of year. But in a couple of weeks, we'll be back helping people get their old refunds. That right, they and, and speaking of that, Greetings, Esther and Chris. I had my taxes prepared and submitted. If I was to bring them to you for your review and corrections are needed, is there a deadline for amendments? Yeah, it's three years from the time the return was filed or before the statute runs out. So, right. You know, so yeah, you we can do it all summer. Yep. So bring and, them in, and we'll take. And a then look. they will pay you with interest. Right. If it's in your favor. Exactly. And if you notice this year, many, many, many taxpayers got interest from the Treasury Department. <laughs> right. Because refunds were so bad last yep. year. Yep. Took forever. And the other thing is, I don't think that the when they were uh, making that adjustment for the unemployment in 2020, I don't think it was done seamlessly. There are many people that haven't gotten their money from that too, from what I can see. Okay, Do, again, as, I'm Esther Goni, as the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 in a cell phone. Right, another thing you should do um, is apply for the recovery rebate if you didn't get it because your income was too high last year to get the recovery, the, the um, stimulus. So if you're somebody that didn't get the stimulus because maybe you, you had sold a rental property in 2020, uh, 20 and so they didn't give you any uh, stimulus but this year you're you're under that l income li limitation income income threshold and you can get the stimulus make sure you do the recovery rebate right 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 i've i've done three returns this week where the couple made over 200,000 but one was under 75,000 and they had kids so i did them separate this year and so they then got the full child tax credit of 3000 or 3600 right. plus all this stimulus right. money. So it was between a 5000 to a $10,000 swing and in that, their favor. And, and that's like not, that's real money. 
Yep. And, you know, it's so interesting. I was talking to somebody the other day. I said it's a lot like playing pool. I mean, if you bank off of this this ball, this part of the thing, it, you might get a, a refund of this. But if you do this, you'll get three times as much. Knowing the angles is so important. Exactly. Right? Yep. yep. All right, wait, let's go back to the phones. We know more emails here, Chris? Uh, we'll go to Bob first. Okay. Hey, Bob, how can we help you? Hi, everyone. So back in early March, my son, he's 20 years old. He has, like, um, income from college and, and during the summer. He filed his taxes online, and he owed, like, a uh, small amount for New York State and Federal, and he, he did those online. So then I filed my taxes online about a week later, and mine were rejected because right. my son failed to claim that he was a dependent, my dependent. Right. He didn't check right. the box off. Right. So now... So here's what you do. You know what to do? Uh, Bob, you know what to do? No. Okay, you, you're both going to file in a. You, well, you never filed. You did. Did you take him off and file electronically? Um. So what happened? Um. No. So we amended. So he amended his attorney and said he was my dependent. Okay. And nothing has happened. I've been trying to refile mine. As okay. Exactly. All right. So they. All right. So in this case. If you've listened to my show before, I say don't file a paper return. In this case, you have to file a paper return because you're not going to be able to claim him as a dependent on your return because he's already been claimed on, on, on his own return. So he submitted the amended return. It'll take them a while to sort it out. They won't let you file using him as a dependent unless you file a paper return. So you're filing a paper return with him and the education credit on it, and then he's going to file his return electronically, I'm, I'm assuming, and take himself off and then pay them whatever small amount he would owe them. But you should come out thousands of dollars ahead. Correct. And um, okay. now what about So you're going to have to file a paper return. I suggest you do return receipt requested uh, certified mail. Okay. Okay. And what, do uh, filing an extension would that do anything? Nope. It's it, it, nobody's going to let you file that return with your kid on it. It's got to be an, an amended return. Or your return's got to go paper because he was right. already. Your return's got to go paper if you're claiming them. But they will. Pro they'll process it. It's just going to take some time, and you want to make sure that you have the proof that you sent it in. Perfect. Thank you very okay. much. You're welcome, Bob. Yeah, so I would send the son's amended return electronically uh -huh. so it gets in their system, right. but the parent's return has to go paper. Right, and but the parents ultimately will get thousands of dollars. Now think about it. On a twenty on a $2,500 um, education credit, the, the kid might have gotten 1000 so there's $1,500 hanging out there, and on the state of New York, usually it's another 400 So so it's like... Fourteen hundred dollars hang no nineteen hundred dollars hanging out there that nobody's going to pick up unless somebody does it this way. Right. It, right. That's a lot of money. It most definitely is. Right. Okay, I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax. We're going to take a short break on the other side. We'll be back on the other side with your texts, your calls, and your questions. I'm the tax man. Yeah, I'm the tax man. Hey, I'm not the tax man. I'm the tax lady. <laughs> hey, I'm Master Gullius from EG Tax, 8030930. 930 star 930 on his cell phone, 716-8030 if you want to text us. And uh, we got nine days, kids, until uh, the jig is up. You got to pay the taxes. Uh, with it, like Frank said, there he sent the tax man uh, thing from the Beatles. But um, we're all ready to help you if you need. You can put. You can come in in a mask. Come in without a mask. Bring your stuff in. Fax it in. You can put it through our portal. We can get it done. I think Bob's our Bob said we had uh, 660 drop-offs so far this year, just in this corporate office alone. Yep. Okay, so we got a text before we, did. we go to Nicholas. Somebody has a corp and an LLC, and they're getting letters from New York State saying invalid corporation status. Yep, yep. New York State has needs the copy of the CT6. 
uh, where you proof that you sent them to that, that you want to be taxed as an S Corp. And I know this is my client that texted it in. I'm going to take care of this tomorrow for you. So give me tomorrow. I'll call you tomorrow sometime during the day. Uh, but that brings what? me to a thing, another thing that's on my list, do this, not that. If you are a C Corp, you are paying too much in taxes. Make the election, do a 2553 and a CT6, and move from an e a, a C Corp to an S Corp. Because it's a lot of money, I'll give you an example. Let's say your net profit on your C Corp is $20,000. And you think, well, so it's not that much. I'm just paying 21% of the $20,000, so I'm paying $4,200 in income tax. Right. But if that were an S Corp, that same 20 would be carried over to your personal return. If that were your only source of income, your standard deduction, if you're married filing a joint return, would be more than that, and you'd pay zero taxes. So you would go from paying $4,200 in taxes to zero by simply moving from a C Corp to an S Corp, because the flat rate on a C Corp is 21%. The and and um, that's after all of your deductions. The f the flat rate on an S corp is whatever your tax rate is, and many people after they apply their deductions owe nothing. And so that's one thing I'd suggest that people really look at. Right. Also, I mean, if you do get charged tax, uh, if you do have higher income on your personal side, you also then if you take that twenty thousand out of the corporation, you would pay. Um, dividends right, an, ta tax, an, an so an another 15%. Right. So you're paying 36% tax on that 20000 right. instead of just 15%. Right. And it's a simple way to move it. It's not hard to do, and it changes your entire tax situation. Okay, let's go to Nicholas in Lancaster. We've been waiting for so, so long. I'm sorry, Nick. How can we help you, sir? Hello, Nick. Nicholas. I don't think Nick is okay, there anymore. We'll put him on hold. Yeah, and, and then we'll go to Debbie and Colden. Hi, Debbie. Hello. The, uh, Frank. Up oh, there's Debbie. I hey, Tim. The getting the money back for um, proper your property taxes. Um, it's last year. Uh, I sent my. I mailed my uh, town and county property taxes in a month before. They were due, but of course they never got it. So I ended up having to pay $170 in late fees. And when I figured this, I already filed my taxes, but I was just wanted to double check that maybe I could get the money back through this thing. Can I add that late fee into the amount of no. taxes I paid? No, no, you can't. No. This would, this would be your actual taxes levied minus any star rebate you got over and above that. Um, and, but you can't include late fees, no. Okay. Well, then, it's, so it's the taxes I paid, uh, property taxes in last year, and the, how much, uh, I'm sorry, the, the 6%, it has to be. In order to even go through the form. It has to at least be six percent of your adjusted gross. The it has to be more than a six percent spread of your adjusted gross income. Okay. Well, it, uh, my, it is okay. So if it is that, then then you might do the do the do the IT two two nine two nine two two nine. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. So going back to the do this, not that. And I I guess we got Nick. Here. Okay, go on, Chris. You can get Oh, that. go ahead, Nick. Hello, Nicholas. Nick family. How is everybody? Good. What can we do for you, sir? Okay, yeah, we only have a couple of minutes. I think Chris, I think Chris Fabian hung up on me on purpose, but I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> but Would I do that to you, Nick? <laughs> anyways <laughs> Anyways, I've been with you guys for sixteen years, so we really appreciate you very much. I just want to tell West for our listeners that. Uh, so since we're running out of time, I got a couple of quick questions. Um, uh, my, I was, I was very interested in the, the daughter scenario or the college scenario. I didn't quite catch all of it, uh, but just a, can you give me a quick synopsis? Because I know we're running out of time. But basically, my daughter's 23. She's attending school here. 
uh, locally. She was attending college. And I think, Chris and I, I think we put her separately. But you're saying don't do that, put her under the house umbrella? That's the question I have. Well, it, we figure out what's best for the family. And last year, it was better for the family for the children to go out down their college kids because to, of all the stimulus. Yep. Okay. But all and right. So you know, it's it's all also confused. Well, there's an income threshold. Like for instance, if you're a highly compensated person, then you're going to get no benefit for your daughter being in college. But let's say that your income is around one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and your kids in college, and that's it, and your kid doesn't have unemployment. In that situation, then it's going to be very good for the family for you to claim her. But let's say that your kids got unemployment. Well, then that's unearned income, and the kid's going to have to pay taxes at the parents' top rate. So there's all these moving parts we have to look at. Uh, but if it's a okay. simple situation m where the parents have modest income under 150, right, right, and the kids in college, and the kid doesn't have unearned income like unemployment, it's usually better for the kid to be claimed by the parents. However, in your situation, there's another thing. She's 24. Hasn't she already been for the first four years of college? Well, she's in a, uh, a, a medical program where she needs... She's an, a graduate yeah. student then? Six year. Yeah. She's a so then what she moves from is the AOTC to the lifetime learning credit, which is 20% or $2,000. Okay. I'll tell you what we'll do is, Chris, and I have an appointment coming up. Chris, well, you need a, well, if Chris is going uh, to do this for you. I may be sick that day. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you he hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling, Nick. Uh, I'll see you. We'll work it out. Yes, exactly. We can work it out. Isn't that out? Isn't that I have thing? no that's idea. That's one of that's those commercials. Song. Okay. okay I, be, I want to do this quick. Um, use the IRS, IRA to the best advantage. If you owe money and you work, take a look at an IRA that you can put in the money in before April the 18th, especially if you're just moving it from the left-hand side of your bank to the right-hand side of the bank. You get to keep your money. That's so funny you say that because that was a text. Can I add to an IRA to reduce tax? Oh, owed? my gosh, yeah, make sure you do that. Um, Maybe you should married, be married filing separately like Chris talked about. If one of the wage earners is moderate and the other one is way high, putting your, your stuff married filing joint together means you don't get stimulus or anything like that. It might be better to uh, be married separate. C claim the daycare credit. Make sure you tell your daycare provider, let me know your social security number. It's a lot, 50% credit. Uh, itemize on the state. Lots of itemized returns on the state. Use the Schedule D worksheet if you have qualified dividends and capital, long-term capital gains. It saves you money. All these things will save you money. Um, let's see. Oh, don't forget the Form 2210. If you're somebody that's that owes money, do the Form 2210 to eliminate the, the penalty in many situations, right? Yeah, you know, that's something I was, I've seen returns, you know, because tax season was extended, they delayed the first estimated payment to June last year. Right. But when we're doing their return, the 2210 is still calculating a penalty because they didn't pay in April. Right. So hopefully the IRS recalculates all that. So, but, but that's another thing you want to make sure you do. Uh, uh, don't forget to change your W-4 at work if you found out you, hold, oh, you owed a lot of money this year. Make sure that you don't uh, repeat the bad thing that happened to you this year. If you took money out of your IRA and pension plan, make sure you, you use the, uh, th and you use the three-year option, make sure you uh, report number two. Um, don't forget about the qualified business income deduction, 20% of the net profit. That's a big thing. And that's especially on many of your investment portfolios. You, you have 199A in there, and that saves you money. Let's see what else. Um, oh, you can still claim a kid over age 24 if they don't have uh, earned income over $4,400, and you're supporting them. That's that. Watch out for filing statuses. You Make sure that you have the correct filing status. Um, Oh, don't forget your Medicare payment as an adjustment if you're self-employed uh, rather than using it as a medical expense because you get a dollar-for-dollar dollar deduction. Uh, don't forget the firefighter's pension on the state of New York. That's completely tax-free. Um, and don't forget to exclude the first $20,000 of your New York State pension if you're collecting and you're over age 59 and a half. 
Agreed. <laughs> that was that's just some of them. You know, I mean, and the I, W four so is things. very confusing. I had a lot of my clients tell me their payroll department says, "I don't know. We don't know how to do the new W four. If you need help, we'll help you after tax in, season. After tax season, and you got to do all five pages of it." Yeah, but I will tell you that that calculation really wants to minimize your yep. your d d the deduction, and so what it does is it makes people owe money, and so they you got really got to find out if that's what they do. Okay, can you add an IRA if you? Yep. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, yep, right. We did that. One. Okay, uh, we got thirty some offices to serve to serve you. EG Tax is open nine to nine Monday through Friday. We have all of our busy beavers there uh, at our branches to help you. If you need the best tax help or you got questions, give us a jingle. Go to our website at egtax.com. You can ask the tax lady on our website. I personally answer your questions. Um, until next week. What, we got anything else you want to say, Chris? Nope, that's it. It's one more week, eight one more days. One more week, you've got to pay your taxes on the 18th or else set up a payment program, uh, but you've got to make sure you get them in by the 18th and file electronically. Okay, until next week, I'm Esther Gullius, and that next week will be Holy Last Saturday. Last Saturday in tax right? season. Last yep. Saturday in tax season. Until next week, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. Thank you for everything. God bless. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.